Last time on Chasing Rainbows. I'm the one you want to talk to. No! Listen to me. Make them. I have no family now. I have no family. What the hell's going on here? I'm from the Department of the Naval Service. We're carrying out a duly authorized confiscation of illegal wireless radio telegraphy equipment. Well, that's everything. Sorry. What is all this other stuff? This stuff? This? <laughs> well, this, this stuff here, this happens to be a photometer. It measures the depth of water. And over here, this is a radio compass. This is a, a musical amplifier, not yet perfected, mind you. And, uh, and oh, and, and here we have an aluminum bag for tea so you don't get soggy little leaves on your soggy little tongue. Are there any further questions? Well, yes, actually. Reginald Stephenson. Haven't I heard or seen that name somewhere before? It was years ago. Years ago, indeed. I was probably buried in some minuscule footnote beneath yet another glowing tome on the dashing Mr. Marconi. Maybe that was it. In a textbook in school. <laughs> I, I guess I just never made the connection before because... Because you wouldn't expect to find me living in an attic over a brothel. Or even a fine nightclub. <laughs> Christmas Eve, 1900. I was alone in a cold little shack, talking into this, trying to send the human voice through the night. It was an act of faith. Hmm? No, My assistant was in a receiving station 50 miles away, listening, but not hearing anything. We were exhausted, numb with failure. I remember even now my words, my litany. One, two, three, four. Is it snowing where you are, Mr. Thiessen? Again and again, no sound, no reply. The silence mocked me. The secret eluded me. But suddenly, my telegraph key rattled. Morse code. Seven simple words. My, uh, my hands were tre trembling so that I could scarcely write them down. It is snowing, doctor. Loud and clear. I have no words to express what I felt at that moment. Never in the history of man had the human voice been carried on the very ether itself. And the possibilities were limitless. I thought that Marconi was the first. I was the first. Canada was the first. That Italian charlatan was still in the Middle Ages, 
still trying to send primitive little beeps a couple of miles. Well, what happened? A storm wrecked my uh, transmitting tower. I couldn't raise enough money to rebuild it. I wasn't in the Italian's league when it came to politicking, bootlicking. So my government chose to support him instead. They gave him $80,000, an exclusive license to build wireless stations in Canada, and I never got a sue. And then my patents were stolen by a couple of American pirates. But that's a long and twisted and sorry tale, and I, I don't think you want to hear any more about it. No, you're wrong. I do. I'm sure this is the place. We, we, we cleared a whole area, but it's all grown up so much since then. That was 12 years ago. I know this is the place. Here's something. What's this? That's it. That's it. There it is, Christopher. It was 300 feet high. And it was beautiful. Oh, the people I could have reached from here. Thousands, millions with a whisper, a whisper as soft as a woman's touch would have reached New York City. We'll build you a new tower. <laughs> no, no, I mean it. How? Oh. I don't know, come on. Time, girls. Hey, watch it with the salt water in the suit, would you? <laughs> we gotta help Ridge. Why? I don't even like the guy that much. All he ever does is insult me. Damn it, Jake, the man is suffering. His, his name is in textbooks, for God's sake, and now he's lost yeah. everything. Except his dignity. Come on, talk to him. I do talk to him every day. He never uses a word with less than four syllables. Okay. Benny, what about you? Come on, you're flush now. What do you say? Bong. Look, can't we straighten out this license thing? You know, get your stuff? Yeah, I've done all that. But the license was never the problem. That was just my feeble way of protesting against the puny bureaucrats. What you have to understand is what happened with my patent. No, I don't have to understand that. Just tell me how much you need. Okay. Rich tells me that... How's your eye? Black. Rich tells me that the absolute minimum, I mean, to get the proper equipment he needs, to get a yeah, proper... Yeah, 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 yeah. How much? $10,000. And here we were thinking there was a problem. Uh, come on. Well, what about these gadgets of yours, Rich? Gadgets? Well, they got to be worth something. They're worth a fortune. Patents were stolen from them years ago by these two guys from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh? Right away, you should have smelled a rat. I knew a guy from Pittsburgh. They offered to form a company with him to finance everything. Robert Hamilton, froze to death, stealing meat. A human tragedy. C'est moi, c'est Arlette. Uh, they told me they'd build me the finest radio research lab on the continent. That was an answer to my prayers. But of course, I had no money to invest, so for my share, my third, I had to sign over all my patents to the company. Dozens of them. My life's work. They never built me any lab or anything else. They just turned around and sold the company. My patents included to the highest bidder, United Radio International. I was a minority shareholder. I was powerless to stop. Now, hold on a minute, Rich. Like my old philosophy professor, Three Fingered Abe, used to say, let's get back to first principles here. Now, who's the enemy and where's he at? United Radio in New York. They have all the patents. 
and they stand to earn millions from them. And from their standpoint, the whole thing was perfectly legal. Legal? It stank to high heaven. I threatened, I sued, I begged, but they ran circles around me. They're not people. They're corporate appendages. They're impregnable. Yeah, but we don't want to impregnate them, do we, Reg? We just want to get our hand up their skirt. Get them a little hot and bothered. I don't like that look on your face, Benny. Every time you get that look, I almost go to jail. No one disputes that these were once Dr. Stephenson's patents, that these were his inventions and his alone. No one disputes that he never received anything approaching fair payment for them. Got bugger all for them, as they know perfectly well. Boy, that's what I call a statue. You know, it's hard to believe some Frenchman built that. And no one disputes that what you did was legal. We, we certainly aren't suggesting for one minute that United stole Dr. Stephenson's patents. Thank you. What do you call it, then? But surely we're beyond legal niceties here. I mean, as you can see, we haven't even brought a lawyer with us today as an act of good faith. Only because you haven't got a case. No, because we're not asking you to do the legal thing, Mr. Caldwell. We're asking you to do the honorable thing. Continue, continue. I'm just here to listen. <coughs> We're asking you. Hey, you wouldn't happen to know where you'd get a nice meatball sandwich around here, would you? You know, nothing too fancy. Maybe just a little spaghetti on the side, some black olives, maybe a little Italian bread. I really have no idea. Well, shall we proceed? Yeah, where was I? You were asking us to do the honorable thing. Exactly. We're asking you to do the honorable thing. Very well. I sympathize with Dr. Stephenson. I bow to his scientific genius. But, as we've stated, ad nauseam, his quarrel is not with us. We acquired these patents quite legally. Indeed, quite honorably, ten years ago from a third party. If Dr. Stephenson was cheated, it was not by us. And that, I'm bound to say, gentlemen, is that. I'd love to sit and discuss American principles of fair play with you over a meatball sandwich, but I've got a tight schedule. <clears throat> oh, by the way, our uh, United Station will start broadcasting in six months or so. I hope you'll buy one of our radio receivers so you can listen. I understand Mr. Eddie Cantor is appearing on the first program. No, better yet. See that we send a radio to Dr. Stephenson. Gratis. Gratis. <laughs> I love it. Now we're talking Latin. <laughs> but one thing I guarantee you that you don't know, that you ought to know, that you got to know, in plain English. Yes? Just you. Some things I don't like to say in front of the help. Hello? I had them show me how to work the lights. <laughs> so what do you think? Of your entrance, I think it's a bit melodramatic. About the theater? Should I buy it? Well, why would you want to buy a theater? For you. What the hell is going on in there? I'll be back in 10 minutes with a check. I told him to make it out to you, Reg, but I know you'll remember who your friends are. A check? For how much? How did I do it? I just told him our little secret. You know about our silent partners. What, what silent, silent partners? partners? You know certain unnamed Chicago gentlemen of Italian extraction who don't like being played for suckers? Certain unnamed meatball lovers who you definitely don't want to get mad at you? 
You threatened him? Did. It was all tea and crumpets with pinkies in the air. I just reminded him that if he valued his kneecaps and those of his near and dear ones, he should listen to reason. Oh, my God. He listened to reason. How much? A hundred. Large ones. A hundred thousand dollars? <laughs> So if this place is no good for your play, there's another one down the street. It's perfect for my play. You know that's not it at all. Do I? It's just wrong to mislead you, to let you give me things. You're afraid that I might ask for something in return? No. It's wrong to let things go on like this. It's wrong of me to give you any reason... To hope? Yes. It's wrong of me to give you any reason to hope. Ah, uh, I wish you could have seen me, boys. We're talking about a Mike Angelo caliber performance here. A thespian masterpiece. <laughs> we're talking Dougie Fairbanks here. We're talking Chaplin himself. my best. <coughs> He's gonna learn to get more fun out of life. It doesn't have to be a gift if that offends your Calvinist soul. I could be an investor. What do you call someone like that, a backer of theatricals? An angel. I will be your angel. Your secret angel. And who knows, if we do this, maybe I'll meet a nice young actress who'll fall hopelessly in love with my money and agree to bear me several heirs. And then you'll be rid of me for good. Oh, is that what you think I want? To be rid of you? I think you're not sure of what you want. Except this. I think you want this. You're pretty smart, aren't you? Me? I'm just a soft-headed old fool. <laughs> there may be one or two schlemiels around who still get a little nervous at the sound of my name, but not many. Is it true you killed a man? Don't be silly. I'm sorry, that was really stupid of me. I... Sometimes I just open my mouth. Without thinking. Such a question. Such a question to ask. From your new angel. Speak up, Dempsey. You're nuts if you think I'm gonna hand him 10,000 one lump sum. You'll get it in installments. And it's a loan. And I expect to be paid back someday. Your millions roll in. Well, I, uh, I'm through with the bartending. I'll have no time for that nonsense. The amplifiers have to be redesigned, the, the heterodon perfected. The liquid barrater? Yeah, okay, okay. 
And I'll need a full-time assistant paid. I thought maybe I could help you. Unpaid. I'm, I'm between engagements right now. Are you ready to work? Seven days a week? We'll soon find out. And I won't stand for any meddling. I insist on having the final word on everything. And I expect that in writing, notarized. I've learned my lesson. Yeah, well, you don't go get all mushy on me there, Reg. You know? I'll go slobber all over me with gratitude. It's embarrassing. <laughs> So listen, you gonna tell me where you've been sneaking off to? Wouldn't you like to know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you couldn't think of going on the courts before five in that. <laughs> You can wear it anywhere. You can wear it all Power. Turn it on, please. Oh, ye of little faith. did it cost me? Oh, a couple of hundred, but well spent. Hi. Hi. Oh, what happened? Oh, uh, nothing. It's just a couple of geniuses at work. <laughs> I've got a favor to ask of you. If you wouldn't mind putting this up where your patrons could see it. <laughs> Saucy new comedy by the dev of the year. It would only be for a couple of days. Sure. Oh, thank you. Bye. Hey, uh, my Bon Moe still form the basis of this thing? Your what? Should I come and see this? I should rate free tickets, shouldn't I? It's your main source of inspiration. I'll have them hold a ticket at the theater for you. Thanks. So how you been, anyway? Fine. How would you expect me to be? I don't know. I just asked. We haven't seen each other in six months. Feels like six minutes. <laughs> I read your thing in Saturday night about Billy the Poems. The, what do you call it? It's your follow-up article. You got through it already? Well, sure. It came out months ago. 
<laughs> oh, right. I get it. That's one of your funny jokes about my reading ability. Anyway, I guess I should say thanks or something. You, you didn't make me look like as much of a square head as I thought you were going to. I lied. I, said, I, I don't think you're handling this quite right. So you came to ask me for a favor. So you're supposed to be nice to me. Oh, but you already said yes. And I know you would never go back on your word. Oh, there was one thing. I, uh, I probably shouldn't even mention this. It's probably not even your fault, but I, uh, well, I spotted one little grammatical error in the article. Where? <laughs> oh, come on, smile. That was a good one. It's one of my funny grammar jokes. Feel free to use it. Good luck. You got a nice full house out there. Good luck, everybody. Oh, oh, Sally, be sure and say every other inch the gentleman, okay? Is that not what I've been saying? Well, yes, but you've got to stress the other more so they can be sure to get it. Paula. I thought I was well, stressing you, it. Uh, you were. Paula, but... Paula, 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 what? please. Not to the actors, not now, what? all right? Relax. Look, it's going to be wonderful. Trust me. Five minutes, everybody. I have to go to the bathroom. Hallelujah! Well, oh, I'm just still not sure about this line at Which all. Which one? No, no more changes. changes. She's so snooty, she'd only sleep with the 23rd Battalion. Well, maybe that's too graphic. Maybe he should say date the 23rd Battalion, or... Paula, please. Well, go light on it. Don't stomp all over it. Stomp all over it? Paula, A, we love you madly. B, please get out of here! All right, people. I've never stomped on a line in my life. Trevor. Thank you. Now, everyone, I know we're all nervous, but that's good, all right? You can use it. Feed on it. Now, I, th I think it was uh, Kipling who once said... Into the shadow of death rode the 600. Who said nothing is worth doing if you're not shaking in your boots at the start. It was Teddy Roosevelt. No, it was Livingston. No, no, it wasn't that. It doesn't matter who it was. All that matters is that you are going to sparkle and you're going to shine. I just want to say two words to you. Oscar Wilde. Sophistication. Badinage, hmm? Wit, 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 hmm? Enjoy yourselves. It's delightful. It plays. I just hope he doesn't say, trust me. He said it. Now, you have one huge advantage with this play. Oh, tell us, tell us. You've got half a dozen good, solid laughs right off the mark. You're going to hear those. Your nerves are going to vanish. You're going to be sailing. You're going to be soaring. Trust, trust me. Oh, good, 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 good. You're in character. That's good. No, no. Uh, hmm? Oh, yes, right. Um, remember, we have never played to anything like this large an audience before, so leave room for the laughs, everybody. Wait them out. Uh, d don't, r don't rush them. Make sure they can hear you. Bruce, Bruce, uh, no, no golf club is going to get a big laugh, so wait, wait it out. And then uh, got my handicap Understood. down to seven. Another good laugh. Wait it out. If you'd like to come for a spin, I'll show you my... <laughs> you see, okay, it's funny, a huge laugh, and then Sally, wait for it, wait for it, and just as it's ebbing away, my, my, you're every inch the gentleman. Every other inch! Oh, um, so every, every other inch. <gasps> Sorry. Sorry. Two minutes, places, everyone. I, uh, really have to go to the... Go, go, go. Right, right, right. Every other inch the gentleman. Oh, I can see my reputation precedes me. I'm Tugger Tamlin, I can see my reputation precedes me. I'm Tugger Tamblin. I can see my reputation precedes me. And that's not all. <coughs> naughty, naughty. And what do you do, Mr. Bigelow? Do? My dear. 
I do polo. I do a martini to die for. But I certainly don't do anything. I love your dress. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Is that the line you use with the girls in France? I never had to use a line with the girls in France. <laughs> His daddy pulled a few strings, and he served out the war in Bermuda. And a living hell it was, too. I mean, you couldn't think of going on the courts before five in that heat. <coughs> it was much too hot in that heat. <laughs> And what do you do, Mr. Bigelow? <laughs> Mr. Bigelow. <laughs> do? Who did I serve with? Yes. Who did you serve with, Mr. Bigelow? The Royal Montreal. Oh, regiment. No, no. Golf club. <laughs> and with distinction. I got my handicap down to seven. At that golf club. If you'd like to come for a spin, I'll show you my putter. My, my. <laughs> my, my. <laughs> You're every other inch, aren't you? Every other inch? What? Every other inch the gentleman, I think she means. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you'd like to come for a spin, I'll show you one of my golf clubs. Namely, my putter. My, my, my. You're every other inch the gentleman, aren't you? Forget it, old sport. I'll even show you my niblick. Forget it, old sport. Every other inch Forget other... it, old sport. I knew a number like her in Bermuda was so snooty she'd only sleep with the 23rd Battalion. <laughs> Is that the line you used with the girls in France? No, no, at the golf club. No, we can't stand this. Read it out loud. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Ibsen, she isn't. You remember Paula Ashley? Spell the name right. She was a one-day wonder in the society columns last year when she graced the Governor General's ball on the arm of the Prince of Wales, no less. But this is a Cinderella story without a happy ending. For some unfathomable reason, our dancing Deb has turned her hand to playwriting. One can only hope she dances better than she writes, or our poor prince's ankles must have been black and blue for weeks. Miss Ashley's so-called play, called Oh So Cutely, Pass the Sugar Daddy, is nothing more than a sophomoric mishmash of strained jokes, presented with seat-squirming amateurishness by a painfully inept cast under the feckless direction of Noel Richards. No doubt this nonsense dazzled the crowd of future narcissists at the McGill Drama Society, but our would-be Cinderella and her misguided troop of mice <laughs> were not content to let it die there. No. They had to drag this ball of fluff downtown, shedding lint all the way to His Majesty's Theater. There, for all unlucky enough to see it, it turned into one fat, embarrassing pumpkin. But you may ask, gentle reader, oh, this guy talks funny. Am I Am not, I not being, being unduly harsh to a harmless little exhibition of vanity? But is it harmless? Or is it rather an outrage when talented artists must toil in obscurity, live in penury, while a dilettante Deb with a well-heeled daddy can afford to parade her fluffy fantasies in public and call them art? There's something grotesquely wrong with this. If Miss Ashley is truly serious about the theater, she'll put some of her ample resources at the service of writers with talent and go back to dancing. The Prince of Wales, when last we heard, is still available. Well, so much for the good part.
liked it. Those lights. Oblivious. They don't care that I died tonight. Life goes on. Why does that make me feel any better? You asked me a question once. I didn't tell you the truth. I knew him. He was just a young boy. He worked for me. But they had a man, a mean streak in him. Beat up one of the girls. So I fired him. That night, I was working alone in the junkyard. He walked in with a gun, told me to open the safe. We had much cash in it, and a Colt 45 revolver. I knew he would shoot me, so I shot him first. I knew I couldn't report it, even though it was a matter of self-defense. I would be labeled for good, a junkyard killer, a Jew gangster. Any hope? for a respectable future for my family would have ended right there. So I wired scraps to his body and dumped him into the river. Now there were rumors, but the body was never found. Only after it was all over did I think maybe I didn't need to kill him. Maybe I could have talked to him. He was a young boy. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And then when my son, Alan, was killed in Passchendaele, I began to have dreams about it. I could see the boy staring out to the river, looking up at me, reaching up for me with his hands. And then when David was killed, I began to dream about it again. God does not forget. He just lets you think he has. I have never told anyone about this, not even my wife. But I wanted to tell you. I want you to know me. I want you to know the facts. If you take any decision, 57, I killed a man, I'm rich, and I love you. Please, I can't cope with this, not tonight, it's not fair to bring all this up now, I'm battered and miserable. A surefire putter joke has died a painful death. No, it's not fair, but I'm a tough bastard in negotiations. Huh? Ask anybody. Is that what this is, a negotiation? I thought it was more along the lines of a proposal. I'm afraid to call it that. You might just laugh in my face. Oh, God, I used to think life was so simple. Thank you. For everything. For caring. It's funny. I feel as though you're becoming my best friend. Well, that will have to do for now. But you think about what I said? Seriously? I'm a serious girl. And you're not getting any younger?
I thought I'd never laugh again after tonight. Oh, you'll laugh again. And don't worry. I've passed the word. That critic will never see the sunrise. <laughs> You're a bad boy for 57. Better be good. I was halfway into bed. Quit boasting. I'm giving the old boy the kiss off. I wanted you to be the first to know. What old boy? Look, Jake, this has already really been a wrench. I'm pulling the plug on you and the geezer. The hell you are. No, 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 you can't do that. Not after you've practically promised the guy. I'm gonna buy a racehorse. A what? A thoroughbred. It's thoroughbred. And that is just about the most stupid, selfish, trivial thing I think I've ever heard. A thoroughbred, four legs. As opposed to what, three legs? <laughs> so it's a bye bye, Reggie. Down the drain. <laughs> All gone. Come here. Breathe. Not in. Breathe. <coughs> oh, I am drunk. <laughs> you are reeking with it. I want to ask you a personal question. Kincaid, you're plastered. <laughs> hey, quick, how many fingers? <laughs> you have no idea how happy this makes me. <laughs> I am going to ask you the pithy personal question. You hope to God I was never going to ask you. You know, I always thought it was me that couldn't cope. You know, that, that, that I was the one that had the problem or something. <laughs> Why have you never, ever, I mean, just once, it's ever, what, ever asked me to go poloing? Poloing? <laughs> I could die right now, a happy man. This. This is a weight off my mortal soul. It truly is. Jake, have some more. No, I can't. Christopher, control yourself. The man is sick. Ah, oh, what the hell. <laughs> you could ask me once. Just one, Chucky. We don't play anymore, Jake. Since the war, well, there aren't enough fellows left. Make up two sides. Excuses, excuse. Let's go swath cutting them, Jake. Like we used to. The only swath cutting that we ever did was in your mind. All the more reason. <laughs> Christopher. All right, you swath them. You swath them, you be done with it. You move on to bigger pastures. Bigger pastures. Well, I did have poetical ambitions at one time until I was exposed as a liar and a paganist. I think that's plagiarist, I'm not sure. Hey! <laughs> what? <laughs> did you see? <laughs> See what they roll about that little dilly ton dab and her embarrassing ball fluff masquerading as a play. <laughs> I loved every comma of it. Oh, just one minute. Sorry, a little slow on the uptake here. All of this wouldn't have anything at all to do with you being disappointed in love. Or did. Hey, Miguel, come here. Come here. Let me tell you something. You. A sucker. I'm disappointed in love. Mm -hmm. Moi, a man. I'm disappointed in lust. And that is nothing. That, that's, that's like a, it's a little, 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 little tiny little flea bite on the rump of my existence. That's all that is. Well, I'm glad to hear it's not bothering you anyway. <laughs> How can I laugh at another man's pain? What kind of human being must I be? Do you want to know something? Do you, do you want to know what I did? What? I, I, I gave her this, uh, I gave her this 
this crummy little piece of scrap metal I found in that gutter. And I told her it was a piece of shrapnel that cut out of me. And she swallowed it. <laughs> Talk about dumb! Talk about putty in my hands. Talk about easy. She did it to you too in the end, did she? Hey. <laughs> I've only one thing, one thing only to say about that. You know what I say? I say to hell with it. To hell with it. Chasing Rainbows. I was wondering if you had the old boy around to meet the parents yet. Ah, oh, you can be a really nasty bastard when you want to be. Reg, speak. Say something. What, what's he doing? He's frozen. Thank you.